Hello. This time we are going to do some fairly straightforward stuff. Uh, it's not going to be learning any big, uh, difficult new concepts. Um, we just need to implement some of the like structure for our game and get it feeling more like a game. So for that, I want to uh, let us have multiple spawn points. Uh, those spawn points are only going to spawn a certain number of enemies and then stop. Uh, wind detection means uh, I want us to be able to know when the player has, has won the level. Um, and then level two. Uh, by that I mean let's make him level 2 and when we detect that we've won move on to level 2 um, and that's all we'll do on the level progression because I think well I want to leave the option open for us to do random generated levels and if we do that we don't need to make a whole load of different scenes for levels because they'll basically be regenerated uh, you know, on the fly but it's a good thing to learn anyway to, how to progress between scenes and stuff like that there's some gotchas there that, that are not intuitive um, and yeah, so a lot of this stuff, I think, um, will... The first simplest thing we can do is just to fix a little cheaty thing we did with enemy spawner. We said the enemy spawner, um, we just gave references uh, a single variable for that, and so there can only ever be one, because they all would all try and set themselves as that. Uh, that's not the system we want. We want a list of all the enemy spawners, because if we're going to have more than one, that will be necessary. So, once this is finished loading, and it goes coloured, I'll know it's loaded. I'm going to jump to References by control clicking it. And here where we say uh, Enemy Spawner, let's call it Enemy Spawners. I didn't do a proper rename there because I don't actually want references to this to update because we're going to make it a whole new thing. We're going to make it a list, pointy brackets, Enemy Spawner. And when you make a list, as you'll see below, um, we have to do, actually sort of create it. It's, a, it's kind of like a, a structure that we've got, to, we've got to create right now before we can put anything into it. And then our enemy spawner itself, rather than just sort of establishing references like this, I'm actually just going to delete that completely because we're not going to do it on awake anymore. Do you remember when we last made a list? What did we last make a list of? Um, uh, nav points. The way we did it was we had on enable and on disable. And on enable, it adds itself to the list. And on disable, it removes itself to the list. And that, and that covers every case, you know, whether it's been created, whether it's been disabled, whether it's been uh, destroyed. All those things will be handled nicely. So we're going to do exactly that. Shall I just copy and paste it? Let's copy and paste those things. And then obviously, not nav points, but enemies. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, uh, we just got spawners, didn't we? Just spawners. So yeah, the exact same thing, just changing what, what list we're adding and removing ourselves from. Um, so that means we've got uh, a list now, but we're going to hit a problem right away where when I go back to Unity, it's going to have some errors because uh, we refer to that, that single spawner. Basically, when a guard sees you, they go and tell the spawner about you. Um, now we could update that so that this goes through all the list of all the different spawners and activates each one of them. But actually, I don't think that really makes sense. If we're going to have a lot of spawners, we don't really want everything that wants to sound the alarm to have to know about every single spawner and go through and tell them something individually. It would be better to have a sort of global alarm variable. Um, something that uh, anything on the level can check. Has the alarm gone off? And anything on the level can also say, hey, the alarm has gone off. I'm sounding the alarm right now. Um, and I think the thing we should make is a level manager because we'll also need that for things that are going to be reset at the start of a level. There's a bunch of stuff that might need to happen at the start of a level, but not uh, as opposed to the start of the game. Right now, the start of the game and the start of the level are the same thing. So anything we set, you know, whatever, however we set up the whole game, that's how it is at the start of a level. Um, but actually, now we're going to have multiple levels. So when we go to the next level, level manager will want to reset a whole bunch of things. Like, is the, has the alarm gone off? Um, so let's create that. So I'm just going to make an empty game object. Uh, I'll call it level manager. And I'll add a component to it, new script, and I'll call that. Well, I've written the word enemy for no reason. <laughs> I'll call that level manager. Uh, and then when we create it, it's going to be a really simple one. It's just going to uh, basically, the, its main job will be to store that alarm reference for now. Um, so I'll double click it. And we'll have a. First of all, we'll have a public bool alarm sounded. And when we start, we're going to say that's not true. It's false. Um, we also want other things to be able to talk to the level manager. So references should have a reference to it. So public static 
level manager, level manager. And we don't need to do anything here. Instead, what we're going to do is in level manager itself, when it, we're actually going to do it on awake, aren't we? We do all our references stuff on awake, not start, because st awake happens before start. And if we do it here, we say references dot level manager equals this. That means that uh, any anyone else who wants to refer to us when they start, they can do it. They just got to do it in their start event because all awake events would have happened when all when all start events happen. That's for anything that already exists in the scene. Obviously, the enemies that get created later, their their start events and awake events happen later. Um, but yeah, establishing references in awake is good practice because then start is allowed to refer to them. If we had some stuff that referred to the level manager in there, it's awake event. Uh, it might work or it might crash. <laughs> it just depends on the order in which things happen, and we don't want that kind of, you know, fragility. Um, so, uh, level manager, it's got a variable for the alarm being sounded. It's going to tell references who it is when it starts up, so other things can can uh, access it. It's at the start of every level. It's going to set the alarm to false, but right now we still have references to. Um, let's just jump back to Unity and see see where it thinks the errors are. So there's one in guard behavior. I'm going to double click that. So instead of references.spawner.activated, I'm going to say references.levelManager alarm sounded equals true. And that whole line of code will be what we run every time we want to sound the alarm. So I'm going to copy and paste it. And the other one was in weapon behavior, I think. So that's when, when you fire a weapon. Uh, am I wrong? No. Uh, yeah, here's the error because we're referring to the spawner. I'm just going to copy and paste uh, that level manager alarm sounded equals true. So is that all we need to do? Um, I'll tell you what, uh, something I'm in the habit of doing is when I've, the enemy spawner, we just replaced the activated variable, didn't we? That was that used to be, is the alarm on or off? Um, and we have our own system for that now. Oh yeah, so in fact, this is a good example. Because this is no longer needed, I delete it right now because nobody should be referring to this. And if I delete it, Unity's gonna tell me if anything's referring to it. And in a second, yeah, we'll see there's a red underline here. Wait, you do refer to it still. So even the enemy spawner itself should be looking at the level manager to know whether the alarm has been sounded or not. And that ought to be it, but if I'm wrong, then Unity will tell me now. Got to wait a while for these errors to kind of clear themselves up. What it's doing then is it's, it's going through all your code you just wrote that you just saved and checking it and seeing if there's anything it knows for sure is wrong. It doesn't catch everything. There's definitely some stuff that when you actually play, can crash then that didn't crash before, as we found several times. <laughs> um, so I think we're just testing this just to see it should just work as it used to, hopefully. Uh, I've been seen, and a bunch of enemies come out. Uh, that's fine, but doesn't go any further than what we already had. Uh, so let's test this theory, and we'll duplicate family enemy spawn on the scene, control D to duplicate it, let's drag it over here. We could even have one like over here, this one's facing into the wall, so we don't want that. It's going to spawn them into the wall. So with this Y rotation here, I'm going to type 180, which just flips it. You can do it with a rotation tool as well, but since I want it to be exactly 180, I might as well type the number. Um, let's see if that works. Fire a gun. Yeah, they come out of both sides. Cool. Um, so the next thing I think enemy spawners need is that they should... Uh, have a limit on how many things they can spawn. So if we open up enemy spawner, we can do public int, uh, int for integer, that's a whole number, um, and we'll just say enemies to spawn. And we can set that in the inspector. Um, what I... The, the time that it's relevant is when we're trying to spawn something, right? So when the level, when the level manager alarm is sounded, um, we are counting down to the next spawn, but, and then if the seconds have ticked over, um, you know what, why even do any of this counting stuff? Let's put it here. So we not only care whether the, alarm, whether the level manager alarm is sounded, we also want to check, um, uh, are our enemies to spawn greater than zero? Do we have more than one enemy? Sorry, do we have, do we have any enemies to spawn? <laughs> um, if we have zero or less somehow, we don't want to spawn any. And then when we do spawn one, we want to remember that we want to re reduce that count. So uh, we do minus minus there. We've done that before, right? <laughs> I can't remember because we also do like, you could also do that, um, which is subtract by one. But minus minus is the more common way of decreasing something. Um, maybe we haven't done it, I don't know. 
Um, yeah, so that should limit it, but we haven't set a value yet, so everything, everything will be on zero. Um, let me drag, once this is finished compiling, I'm gonna drag this enemy spawner down to be next to the other enemy spawner. Be careful when dragging stuff in the hierarchy. Anytime it's got that outline around something, you're about to make it a child, and you don't wanna do that in this case. We just wanna put it there. Um, so let's have, this one is gonna spawn like 20 enemies, and then the other spawner is gonna spawn just five. And I made those very different just so that we'll be able to see that they both are respecting their, the values we gave them. They're not, you know, it's not getting a number out of nowhere. So here, yeah, that looks like five. Almost take them out in one shotgun blast. And then that one was 20. Cool, so our level is actually completable now, right? If we, if I go over and take this guy out. Shotgun is kind of nice for guards. We want to buff it a bit, I think, because the rail gun is so good. <laughs> Um, yeah. So now we finish the level. Um, the only thing is we don't actually uh, go anywhere after this. <laughs> there is no level two, uh, but it feels nice to finish it. Like the fact that it was infinite was useful for testing. Like we always have new enemies to test our weapons on. Uh, but it does it's like I don't know. It, it's unpleasant to just have a level goes on and on and on, like a constant influx of enemies. The fact that we can clear it now is very satisfying. Um, but we don't have a level two. Sorry, we don't have a level two. So let's make a level two. Um, so we've been putting all of our stuff in one folder for now. Um, as a project gets bigger, you want to kind of file things in different folders. The only thing that isn't already in a um, uh, in the main folder is is our scenes and our current scene. Uh, let's save actually. Hit Control S. Um, our current scene is still called Sample Scene, which is a stupid name. So I'm just going to hit F2 there to rename it, and I'm going to call it Level 1. And then I'm going to duplicate it with Control D, and that automatically names it Level 2, which is nice. Um, these are identical right now. So we could change Level 2, but actually the level we've been making has a lot of weapons, a lot of elements. Um, it's quite chaotic. Let's go to Level 1 instead and change that one to be simpler. So I think what I'll do is I'll take out all but one of the guards, just going to delete two of the guards. Um, I'll take out that, let's take out the first enemy spawner, so we've only got the second one, so it's only going to spawn five enemies. Uh, let's take out the rail gun, um, also delete this old rifle which we're not using anymore anyway. Um, and that's a simpler level one. So let's just test that in isolation, we won't be able to progress from it yet, but um, just check that I didn't break anything. Oh yeah, that's nice and clean. So if, you, if the player is still trying to learn like what the controls are and stuff like that, we want to give them a nice easy time with it. And just how, like what is a guard and how do these enemies interact. Um, yeah, that's cool. Um, so how should we progress? Well, the first thing we need to do, I think this is a job for level manager, right? Level manager should be the thing that checks, is the level complete? And what I want to write here is something like, um, if all enemies are dead, go to the next level. Um, but it's tricky to check that right now because we don't have a list of enemies. So I think we should make one. I think we should go to references and just the same way we did a list of enemy spawners, let's actually copy that and say enemy behavior um, and make that a list of enemy behavior and call it all enemies. I'm calling it all enemies just to remind us that this is not just the little ones, it's the guards as well. That's what we want. To, we want everyone who's an enemy to, to check, uh, to be on this list. So I control clicked. Uh, I'll just do that again. Um, so to jump to enemy behavior, I control clicked it. And now we will do that same trick with on, on enable and on disable. But there's, there's one catch here. So if I just type on enable, uh, it auto completes. Bloody hell. <laughs> um, it is the day after Halloween as I write this, and there's fireworks going on. Um, we go to references, all enemies, add this, put us on the list. And then we also do on disable. If, if that doesn't come up, by the way, you can hit control J to kind of force it to come up. Um, and we'll do once again, references dot all enemies dot remove this. But there's a problem with this because we made them private. Uh, just when it when it auto completed this, it assumed we wanted them to be private. And you might notice we have a helpful reminder up here <laughs> that protected things can be used by our children and not us. 
Private things really can't be used by anybody. We probably don't want anything to be private, in fact. <laughs> I've said that right here. So let's make these things protected instead, because we actually want our child, which is guard behavior. Um, they should also add themselves to the list and remove themselves from this list. Um, let me actually just check that guard behavior doesn't doesn't have its own on enable or on disable or anything like that. No. If it did, we'd, we'd want to make sure it was override. So if the child wants to, wants to do the parents thing and its own thing, then you override it and then you also call the base function. We don't need to do that today, but just a reminder for that. Um, so we have a list of all enemies now. And then uh, what does level manager need to do? Well, this check really is just if references dot all enemies, uh, we just want to know, is there anything on that list? Is it empty? And so I'm going to say uh, count. Count is how many things are on the list. If that count is less than one, then uh, the level is over. And so now, let's I'll split this comment in two because now this is the go to the next level part. How are we going to go to the next level? We want to, so you might remember we have a thing called scene manager, which is not recognized by default, but if we hit control J, uh, then it is suggested. And when we click it, it's going to import a reference to scene management because um, it's this kind of special thing. And is it load scene? Yeah, load scene. And then in brackets, we, it wants the name of a scene. Well, same build index there, but actually I think we'll find if we scroll through the options here, scene name. This is the one we can probably get. But what scene name could we give it? So we could just type in level two here, but that's a bad idea because we might rename level two and then our code crashes. And you want to avoid stuff like that where just renaming a, an asset can crash your code. So actually we would like a reference to it. Um, so I would like a public scene asset. Again, it doesn't recognize it immediately because it's kind of a special term. If we hit control J, it will understand what we mean. Uh, we, we double click it there and it, it imports I think it was Unity Editor was the uh, the the namespace it needed there, um, and I'm just going to call this next level. And then when we go to the we want to load the next level, we put next level dot name because it needs it needs the name of it for some reason rather than the actual scene reference. Uh, so that will work, but we need to actually give it that reference as well. And this is where it starts to get. Oh, you know, uh, there's something we should fix, maybe, because... So it doesn't really matter yet, but it's it's not great. Oh, we've got a few things to fix. Yeah, there's a few things we should fix here. Okay, first let's just check this works, um, so we don't lose our train of thought. Uh, if we go into our scenes folder here, um, and then click back on the enemy spawner, this is the enemy spawner in level one, we're going to drag... Uh, why did I say enemy spawner? I keep getting these two things confused for some reason. Um, we're going to drag level two into the next level field, and now it's got a reference to it. And then for fun, why don't we go into level two? Uh, we'll save changes to our current scene. Go to level manager there. Next level for level two. Well, we don't have level three yet. Let's just drag level one in there, and now our game will loop. It's kind of a weird thing to do, but uh, it means that the game will never run out of stuff. Um, so. Double click level one. Oh yeah, now that we have multiple scenes, it's worth knowing if, when you click play, it doesn't necessarily load the first level. It's gonna load whatever scene you have open. So we wanna make sure we lo load scene one. Um, and then let's try and complete scene one. Can we do this in one shot? No, not even close. And it crashes. <laughs> um, the reason for this, so it says, let's go to the console and read this. Uh, level 2 cannot be loaded because it has not been added to the build settings or the asset bundle has not been loaded. That's a weird error message. Um, it's So this is a strange choice by Unity, but by default all the scenes you create would not be in the game when you build the game. So building the game it means turning it into a, like an executable that you can give to other people and they can install it and play it. Basically, if you want anyone else to play the game, you build it. Um, and right now when we build it, we'll just throw away all our work. <laughs> like none of these scenes will be in the game. You won't be able to play the game, it just won't work at all. Uh, we've never touched the build settings at all because we've never got that far. But if you go to file build settings, then this is where you decide like what platform your game is gonna be for. Um, 
There's a bunch of other special things here. But yeah, by default, scenes in build, none. <laughs> none of them are in there. I don't know why it defaults to not putting them in there, but uh, I think they should be in there. So I just uh, shift clicked those and then dragged them in. Um, yeah, you can also say add open scenes. I mean, I, as far as I can tell, well, we only ever have one scene open. I guess it is possible to have more than one scene open, but I've, that's a rare thing, so it's easy to just drag them in. Um, so you've got to remember to do this every time we make a new level. Uh, like I say, we might end up randomly generating levels, in which case the actual scenes, we might only have one scene and just keep regenerating the elements in it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a thing definitely worth knowing. Uh, so we're still on level one, and hopefully now we can just do it. The guards are no threat to you, are they? Which is, I think they should be. Oh, I th uh, they can damage you a little bit, but I think it's just a contact damage. Okay, so that works, but it's abrupt, right? <laughs> That's the instant I won, I was immediately on the next level. Yeah, and then immediately back to level one. Okay, cool. So it's nice that that works. <laughs> um, but we should fix that abruptness problem. Um, before we do, though, let's fix the things I was talking about because I realized uh, we've been a bit sloppy in that we have a level manager that's supposed to be pretty much the same between the two levels, but it's not a prefab, it's an individual thing. So if we ever change what the level manager was like, if we added a new component to it or something, we'd have to do that separately in both scenes because there's not they don't have anything to do with each other right now. The fact they have the same name um, is irrelevant. Uh, it's not a prefab, so they don't actually have any connection. So let's take, um, we'll go back to our assets folder here, and I'm just gonna drag level manager down here. So we've made this one into a prefab. That's cool, but we also need the one in level two. Let's save this scene. Uh, the one in level two is not a prefab. It's still its own instance. So there isn't an easy way to sort of tell it, hey, you just be be an instance of this prefab. So instead, we will just um, uh, drag the prefab into the scene. That'll make a whole new one. We don't want two of them, and we just delete the old one. Um, and all we've got to do is remember that, that we need to change next level so it's not next level two. Oh yeah, uh, I should just mention this actually. The, you don't have to drag the scene. If we're, if we're not in the scene view already, then uh, might as well click this little target and it'll just come up the list of scenes and we'll point it to level one. It could load itself again. That's um, not, not as um, crazy as... Uh, <laughs> it's equally crazy as what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Both those options are uh, placeholders that we will end up changing, but yeah, for now. Let's just get that working as it is. And then I realized enemy spawners are also not prefabs, which they should be definitely. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one we pick, but let's drag one of them into the project folder. And uh, let's actually, so again, we can't sort of, we can't tell this one, hey, you're, a, you're an instance of that. But what I will do, let's say, if we'd place this really carefully, we didn't, but let's say we did. <laughs> um, and we really didn't want to have to place the new one in exactly the same spot, like that was going to be arduous. Uh, what we can do is um, copy a component. So you click this little cog and you can copy a component. Now, we could do that on the transform or we could do it on the enemy spawner. I don't know of an easy way to do both. Oh, no, actually, I do. Um, yeah, let's do it. This is just a good practice. So I'm going to drag a new enemy spawner into the scene. So we created a prefab. I just can't find it right now. Uh, you would think being alphabetical. Oh, it's not blue. That's why it's. it's um, yeah, that's interesting. Why? Hmm. How come that one we actually see the actual model, whereas something like explosion, which has a model, we don't see the model. Or maybe maybe it's because the root object. Nope. Nope. It's not that. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, but anyway, that's that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to drag. So my goal is to replace this with an instance of the prefab. I'm going to leave the the existing one there for now. I've dragged a new instance of the prefab in, but this one is exactly the same as the, the one over here. Uh, so if I want it to match this old one exactly, I can go to transform, copy component, then I go to the in prefab instance, and I go to the cog, um, paste component values, and it jumps to exactly where that thing is. It's not just position, it's rotation, it's everything else. Um, and then equally, let's say we spent ages configuring this incredibly complex enemy spawner <laughs> where we just put in the, um, the five, then 
Uh, let's actually make it one second between spawns, so it's also slower. Um, then we click here, we say copy component, and we go over to the prefab instance, and we paste paste component values. And now it's configured exactly like the old one. And once you've done that for all the components you care about, then you can delete the old the old one. So yeah, that's that's the thing that's been useful sometimes. Um, I'm just going to move this level manager in the order. No, I'm not. What, what just happened? What did that do? Parenting? No, no, no. <laughs> that was exactly what I told you to watch out for. Okay, all good. Um, cool. So those are prefabs now, which means that if we update, if we update what an enemy spawner looks like, it will change in all these different places, which is that's definitely something we want. Nav points are already prefabs. So that's good. Um, level geometry is just that parent that kind of holds all the the individual pieces. Um, might be interesting to make these two levels look different, look more different. Um, like let's, I think we want to change level one really. So go to scenes, level one, definitely save. Um, let's just like delete the middle obstacle maybe. And now it'll feel different as well as being much simpler. Uh, yes, let's just check we didn't break anything. Real simple, spacious level one. <laughs> Let the enemies come, and then the instant it's done, we're on level two. And oh no, I did break something. Um, let's see what was that. I just double clicked on it. Uh, Going to read the error message first. The variable spawn point of enemy spawner has not been assigned. So spawn point is where the enemy comes out, um, but I'm surprised that that is the case because we we didn't change that, did we? Um, what I'm I'm trying to make it when I click it, I want it to highlight which enemy spawner it's talking about. But I guess we can just look individually. Um, enemy spawner, it's spawn point. Let me. This is scene view. Why am I seeing it? Okay, it's spawn point is that oh yeah so that's right this enemy spawner oh uh, so I, when i click it in the hierarchy i move my cursor over to the scene view and i hit f and that jumps me to it uh when i click its spawn point that's set to none oh is that because they pasted those values hmm maybe i oh there's several things wrong here why isn't this it? oh did we not update this one Okay, whoops. Uh, all right, <laughs> we'll come back to that in a sec. Let's fix the, the issue we're looking into right now. So this is on level two, and the second enemy spawner doesn't have a reference to its own spawn point. I guess that's when I, because I pasted all the values, so it makes sense. I would have pasted, I, it makes sense as a bug. It's not the bug I would expect to see, because what I did was I copied all these values, and then I pasted them. No, I didn't, right. I copied the values from the old one into the new one. So basically the new one had a reference to the old one's enemy's uh, spawn point. Um, and then I deleted the old one, so that's why it has a uh, broken reference. So it's, it's an easy fix, we just drag spawn point into here. Um, actually, um, that will work just fine, but really it, it thinks this is a custom thing we've just done, and it's not. It's the same as the prefab, I just want to revert that. Every, you know, the, this enemy spawner prefab, in fact let's open the prefab, uh, the prefab knows that its spawn point, the reference to the spawn point should be the one within this prefab. And when you duplicate it, it doesn't get confused about that. It knows that each one should point to its own child as, as the spawn point. We just messed it up by, um, well, let's say I just messed it up <laughs> by um, pasting those values over and then deleting the thing. So I did want those those spawn timings. I just didn't want the, um, the spawn reference. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, that a bug like that happens quite a lot in my main project as well, <laughs> where we kind of uh, change something and then something loses its reference to its own child. Um, I'm actually going to change these a bit because it, it occurred to me when I was doing this, we don't want one that's super fast and super plentiful. Uh, let's have one that's uh, going to churn out a lot of enemies, but slowly, and then this one is going to do them very fast. Um, this one's going to do 10 at once, and the other one's going to steady trickle. We'll see what that feels like. Uh, let's just play that. Firstly, to check I fixed the bug, and then secondly, to see how that feels. 
yeah so that one forms like a it's like an arrow formation and so as a player my strategy is get rid of the nasty scary horde uh, and then we can deal with the slow trickle more easily yeah that works pretty well so these are sort of adding a, a steady pressure um, while the other one adds an immediate threat that you have to deal with but we still got this extremely quick transition so let's fix that so that was on the transition is a level manager thing um, and let's give level manager a new variable a public float seconds uh, before next level um, and at the start of each level we could set that to uh, actually yeah let's let's put it in start not awaken um, I set that to like three um, yeah and then when there are no enemies uh, we'll reduce this by time dot delta time how much time has passed um, and then only when that is zero will we uh, when that is less than or equal to zero do we actually want to move on um, so if all enemies are dead wait a bit then go to the next level uh, so the way I've structured this means that if for some reason the all enemies were no longer dead like there is zero and then one spawned for example um, this counter would stop um, it wouldn't reset it would just stop counting down until that enemy was dealt with and then um, uh, it would eventually tick down uh, that is intentional because uh, I saw a case when I was doing my test run of where if I killed the guard instantaneously and there's only one guard it went immediately to the next level because the other enemies didn't have a chance to spawn before the check ran uh, and that feels like a bit of an exploit <laughs> if we wanted to make it that a game mechanic we could but we'd want specific rules about it we don't want it to happen as a quirk of our code um, this is not the perfect way to deal with that because I mean it, it completely fixes that case because the time when there are no enemies is almost zero um, but there's probably still an exploit you could do where if you instantly kill the guards and then really like lay fire down on the spawn point you might be able to accumulate enough <laughs> progress time that the level moves on um, I'm sort of convincing myself that we should fix that uh, but anyway let's just check this works at all first uh, second for next level is set to three at the start of the level and then it will tick down all the time that all enemies are dead and we'll start with level one this time because that's easier to complete Take out the guard. Take out the enemies. There's a nice grace period and then we move on. That's cool. That's what we wanted. This one's going to be more of a pain in the ass to complete now because um, you've got to wait for all these things to spawn, so that's not great. Probably shouldn't be probably shouldn't have too long of a period where it's not challenging, but the level isn't over. Actually maybe we can see if if I can it so that's the yeah that's that's the bad case I was talking about where I don't know if I actually cheated there and, and managed to move on before the enemies were done but either way it moved on very suddenly when the enemies are done and that's because our, our grace timer is ticking down all the time that there are no enemies on screen and we we're able to keep that state going quite a bit by just mowing down the enemies as they came out so let's actually fix that and the way I want to fix that is just to say that um, so let's have a public float of grace time at end of level I like to always be specific in my in my names uh, that's the thing that, that will make three um, and at the start of the level we say seconds for next level is set to that grace time um, and then the change we want to make is when not all enemies are dead we should uh, reset that. So this line of code is just setting the second for next level to the grace time. So basically, if in that situation where we ambush the guard and we, we shotgun him immediately, there's a moment where there's nobody uh, on screen, 
then this ticks down, we get here, uh, we don't go to the next level because it hasn't finished ticking down yet, and then the next frame or whenever the next enemy spawns, as soon as there's an enemy back on screen, we're like, oh no, false alarm, we're, the level is not over, go back to the start, wait three seconds. So only when there's three uninterrupted seconds of no enemies on screen do we progress. And, you know, that's not the same as ensuring that all of the spawners have definitely spawned all their stuff. If we had a really long time between spawns, that could happen. But I feel like it's a good rule anyway. Like, if you manage to clear the whole place and nothing has spawned for three seconds, you're good. We can move on. You've won. <laughs> if we... It depends what kind of game you want to make, obviously. We could have a game where there's long periods between spawns and you have time to prepare between waves. I'm sort of thinking of this as, like, one level is one onslaught. And if you wipe that onslaught out, you move on to the next level. Um, so yeah, this, this suits our current purposes. Uh, this will be level one again. Uh, I guess I can just quickly beat it. Is the Uzi better than the shotgun? I think it is currently. Oh, that didn't work. That didn't work. Oh, I know why. Because uh, we haven't yet... Uh, level manager, let's open the prefab. We don't want to change it in instance. We want to change the prefab itself. Uh, and we want to set the grace time to three because, uh, of course, it is a new variable, so it defaulted to zero. Uzi's probably, well, yeah, because the shotgun's got a close range, but so is the Uzi. Good bit of grace time, and then we will kill these as fast as possible with a wildly overpowered railgun. And now let's make sure there's a lot of time here where there's no enemies on screen. And yet, we're not progressing to the next level, which is good. That's what we want. Oh, I could... Um, uh, it would be kind of fun to see it, wouldn't it? Yeah, we can see it tick down. Um, yeah, that's working. Uh, yeah, and I just noticed the yes, enemy spawner is still stuck. So let's, we've learned our lesson now. Let's um, uh, bring in the enemy spawner prefab, which doesn't look like I expect. And I will copy its location. Uh, is, this lo is its location already correct? I can't get my bearings on this. <laughs> this is uh, not where I expect it to be. So I go to the prefab instance. Oh yeah, it's put in a totally different space, totally different spot. Uh, or paste component values, and now it's moved to where we want it. Uh, for its actual spawn configuration, I'm just going to look at those values and copy them over. So 0 0.2 and 5 is currently 0 0.2 and 20. Let's change that to a 5. Uh, so we didn't copy and paste the values because we don't want to lose our reference to our spawn point. It's easy to fix if you do lose the reference to the spawn point, but yeah, it was it made more sense in this case to actually just write out the values. Um, Okay, I think that might be it. Let me just check level two and just make sure I'm not seeing any things that should be prefabs that aren't. No. Okay, one more playthrough just to check everything's working. And then we should be done. Let me do shotgun for the guard. Oh, that was good. And a one hit kill is very satisfying. It's a little bit hard to do consistently, and I think that's because our spread is random. So, nice grace period. Next level. I think I'm starting to feel like we should um, time the whole level because it's quite satisfying to try and do it as fast as possible. And obviously we need to rebalance these weapons because railgun is way better. I wonder about having like limited railgun shots, like maybe it's a resource. Because it's, it's great that it's powerful. I love it. <laughs> um, but either the other weapons need to get more powerful or the railgun needs to be special and, and um, restrictive in some way. Cool. And now our game loops. Hooray! We've got a level structure. It feels nice to have a, you know, do one level and finish it and then move on to the next one, even if that boundary is kind of artificial. <laughs> like, the content is not really um, a good, uh, you know, bait at the moment. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to make this roguelike, wouldn't it? If, if you're building up your arsenal over the course of the, the game and when you die, you get all, set all the way back to the, to the start. Uh, if we do that, I would like to make sure that we certainly we need random levels to be a roguelike. Um, and like to make sure that those would be sufficiently different to each other that you don't there's not a pain to to be set back to the start um yeah and the, so the other mechanic that we don't have in yet that i'd like to do next time is um 
uh, making guards invulnerable until you set off some alarm so that it's not just um, a case of gathering weapons and you know the alarm going off just because you sort of have to shoot them out of boredom. <laughs> um, we should actually uh, force you to uh, trip the alarm to take their shields down because I think that'd be a cool just sort of manually summon the alarm. Um, but yeah, that'll be a thing for another episode. <laughs>